In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to set up a very simple store algorithm uh, for a very simple game. Now, in this game, I'm going to be running everything out of the console, and I could be doing it out of a GUI, but it, I think doing a GUI just kind of mucks up the mixture here. It kind of adds a complexity here that takes away from the actual store algorithm. So, if you wanted to do it with that, the overall, the overall fundamental concepts are the same, but I'm just going to do it in the console just to keep it simple. Now I've already set up a main game loop here and it's just pretty sparse. So we have our main menu choice that the user can make. We also have uh, the person's inventory. Now it's important to know that this inventory stuff has to be outside of the store. Okay, now you can put it in the main game loop. This should actually go in there. Okay, the menu choice, uh, actually sorry, this should not go in here. The, um, the, main, the main menu choice has to be outside of the main game loop, otherwise you can't make a main menu choice, and well, you can't make a while loop that depends on it. The reason why these variables have to be outside of the loop is because otherwise, every time someone selects a menu item and it goes back to the main menu or the display inventory screen, it's going to reset all these values and then uh, nothing you do will ever actually make any difference in the game. Okay, so here we have just a very simple inventory screen. Okay, so it just displays your inventory and then it shows the very basics of a game where it gives you uh, a zero for exit, one to go to the store, and please enter your choice, and it takes in your choice. And if you enter zero, you if you enter anything but zero, then you'll go back again in the loop. If you enter a zero, you'll uh, exit the loop and end the program. Okay, so let's just see how this works. Okay, so there's my inventory. Okay, so I can go to the uh, go to the store now. Right now, if I choose to go to the store, nothing will happen because I don't have the store code yet. If, in fact, if I choose anything, nothing will happen except for zero, which will end the program. Okay, so what I'm going to do though is I'm going to put an if statement here. So if the menu choice was equal to one, okay, this means that they want to go to the store. Okay, now when we go to the store, what we're going to do is it's usually a good idea to clear the screen in some way. So I'll just clear the screen here. Okay, then it's a good idea to show the person their inventory. I'm just going to copy the inventory screen from the above menu there. Now the reason why is because once they're in the store, if they don't know how much money they have or how much um, or how much of every inventory item they have, then it's very difficult for them to know what to buy. And you know, you might say, well, well they should have remembered from the main menu screen, but that's going to make it difficult for them. And you don't want the game to be difficult to play. Okay. So then, what we're going to do is we are going to introduce a variable called. Now, now we have to introduce this outside of the outside of the store because we're going to use a while loop for this. Okay, so we'll say for a do while. Okay, and we're going to say the person can basically loop around in the store while their store choice is not equal to zero. All right, now you can tell this is actually very close to the main menu choice where I'm going to make the exit choice to be zero. And it's good for menu consistency just to do that overall. Okay, so I've got to create that store choice variable. Okay, I'll just put it out here. Okay, so here's the store and then I display the inventory and I'm gonna give them some options. Zero would be Exit the store. Okay. Okay, so we're going to have one is going to be purchase lemons. Okay, and we're going to have to uh, tell them the price of the lemons. Now, uh, whatever your game is, you're going to have to tweak the prices around. It's very difficult to know what the prices should be just off the top unless you've like, carefully calculated everything out. But uh, for this game, let's just say lemons cost, I don't know, $1 each. Okay, and then the end line. Okay, in fact, Let's just copy this over here so I don't have to type it out over and over again. OK, 
Okay, so there's going to be four things I can purchase in this store. So I'll purchase lemons, purchase sugar. Let's say, let's make everything a different price. Let's say sugar's $2, uh, purchase cups. Um, let's say cups are, I don't know, $1 for three cups. Okay, I'm going to introduce a little bit of complexity there. And the last one is going to be ice cubes. And we'll say ice cubes are, I don't know, $2 for, I don't know, let's see, I give it a weird number. Well, let's just say $2 for 20. Okay, well, if we're going to do $2 for 20, we should just do $1 for 10. Okay, but you can set it up in any way you want. I'm just keeping everything with integers right now. Um, if you're making your store and it doesn't use integers, that's fine too. I'm just using integers uh, because it keeps it simple and it also makes the uh, formatting a lot easier. Otherwise, you've got to use, start using set with to make sure you have like two, de two decimal values and so on and so forth. Okay, so then I say C in. Oh, I got a prompt for the choice. Okay, please enter your choice. in store choice okay so what we're going to do here is we're going to put in a few um, user-friendly uh, features here now I'm not going to do error trapping uh, to make sure that the person cannot enter a zero or less than zero or something like that um, but well it, it's overall it's a good idea to do that so people won't be able to break your game Okay, so I'm going to, anyways, just say if uh, store choice is equal to 1, this means that the person uh, must have purchased lemons. Okay, then we're going to ask them and we're going to say see out how many would you like to purchase? Now, this is a nice feature to have because Sometimes in a game, like I remember playing games where you had to buy, you want to buy like a hundred potions, but you can only buy them one at a time. So you'd have to keep navigating to the menu and choose like buy potion and then yes, uh, confirm, then buy potion, yes, confirm. And you just sit there for a long time. When, it'd be nicer if you could just select how many you wanted to buy in the first place. Okay, so you'd say, how many would you like to purchase? Okay, now what you're going to have to do is take a CN amount, okay, and uh, we're going to say, amount. We'll just make the amount variable up there. Okay, so C in amount. Okay, now what we're going to have to do is, well, we'll check and we can check it, I guess. It won't be that big of a deal. We're going to make sure that they have enough money and also that they haven't entered a, a bad number. Okay, so when we ask this, we're going to say do Okay, while, okay, now we're going to keep asking this as long as the amount is less than zero. So that if they enter a less than zero amount, meaning uh, they're trying to break your game by entering, like, I want to buy negative 10,000 lemons, and then it gives them $10,000. Um, we don't want to do that. So we'll say if the amount is less than zero, we're going to repeat the question. Okay, or if amount times we'll say one which is the lemon cost okay now I'm just I normally wouldn't do something times one but I'm just doing it to demonstrate that like, if the lemons costed something besides one you'd have to have the amount times the cost okay so the amount times the cost is greater than the money you have okay so they cannot spend more money than they have okay uh, let's take a look at this now and just see if this part works Okay, it's like always a good idea to frequently test. I've got an error here. Oh, here we go. Okay, so it looks like uh, we fixed that there. So let's go and compile again. Oh, an error. Oh, uh, okay, missing semicolon on a while loop. Okay, let's go again. Okay, so right now we can go to the store, clears the screen, and Notice how the inventory stays looking the same. That's pretty nice. Okay, it might be nice to have an extra end line here, so I'll add that in later. So I want to purchase lemons. How many would you like to purchase? 
Okay, and again, an, an extra spacing there would be nice. And I'll choose negative eight. Okay, won't let me purchase negative eight. I've got a hundred dollars, so the most I can purchase is one hundred lemons. Let's try and purchase ten thousand. Okay, won't let me fifty. Okay, good. All right, now so far it doesn't do anything to the inventory because I haven't done anything to affect that uh, so far. Okay, but so far it's working. Now there were a couple things I wanted to do here. I wanted to, at the beginning of the store menu, I wanted to put some spacing there. Okay, and here I'll add some spacing as well. Okay, we'll see how that looks. I might fix that again later. Okay, now after we have a good value, then what are we going to do with it? All right, well, we have to say... Um, so once we have the good value, that we're going to say lemons plus equals the amount. Okay, so if they bought so many lemons, then they should add that many lemons to their lemon inventory. And money minus equals has to take away money uh, or amount times one. Now I'm doing times one because of the lemon cost. Okay, so if the lemons actually cost three or five, then you'd have to change it this this number to a five or a three. Ideally, this should be a variable, but um, we'll just leave it like that for now. Okay, so let's run this and see how it looks. Okay, so one, I want to go to the store. Okay, that actually looks pretty nice. The, the it looks like the menu just changed instead of jumping around. Okay, so I'll purchase lemons. How many would you like to purchase? Negative nine. No, zero. Okay, zero looks okay. Uh, let's try to purchase lemons again. How many would you like to purchase? I don't know, uh, 15, or let's choose too many. 15, I don't know, that's 1.5 million or something. All right, uh, nope, won't let me do that. Okay, uh, I want to purchase 30 lemons. Okay, and you can see what's happened here is my money went down by $30. My lemons went up by uh, 30. Okay, good, so far so good. Now. All we have to do now, we have a working one, is we can copy this over for each other one. Okay, so I'm going to say else, else if store choice is equal to two, and that's going to be sugar, which is two dollars. Now notice I didn't need another amount variable, I'm just using that same one. Okay, because it doesn't matter, I'm calculating the amount for each one. Um, it's just, I'm just calculating a total uh, for each one. So how many would you like to purchase? amount, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this one would be sugar plus equals amount. Okay, so you're going to buy that much amount. But here, remember, sugar costs $2. So what we do is instead, okay, instead of taking times one, we'll just take away times two. All right. And once again, we should test. Now, I'm confident that this is going to work, but you always want to test it, like all the time because you never want to program a whole bunch of stuff and then find out that it didn't work later because it just makes a whole bunch of problems. Okay, the, a little bit of testing will save you a lot of time later. So I want to purchase, um, let's see, sugars. Okay, let's go 20 sugar. Okay, so the sugar went up by 20. My dollar amount went down by 40, which is exactly what I want. Okay, so I'm going to add the next part here. Now choice three was purchase cups. Okay, and it was one dollar for three cups. Okay, so how many would you like to purchase? Notice how all this is the same. Um, oh, up here this should have been a two because of the cost. Okay, this is going to be one, so they can only purchase it in one dollar increments. Okay, now after the amount, okay, now instead of sugar, my cups is going to be equal to three times the amount. Okay, because you purchase, it's one dollar for three amount. So if they said they wanted to purchase like six dollars worth, right, then it's going to give them three times that amount. Okay, and money is equal to, it's going to take away one dollar, okay, because of the cup cost. And this one is because they come in groups of three. Okay, let's go test. Okay, go to the store, purchase cups. Now if I spend $20, I should get 60 cups. 
Okay, yeah, I lost $20. I should also not be able to spend like $2,000 cups. Okay, good. If I want to buy some sugar, okay, I shouldn't be able to do 400 sugar. Nope. Okay, I'll buy just 20 sugars. Okay, good. Looking good. All right, last one. Okay, is going to be ice cubes. Okay, and I said something like one dollar for ten. Okay. Okay, so actually, let's do uh, let's make ice cubes really expensive. Let's do it three dollars for ten. Okay, so and this is just to illustrate the the point. I don't know if I would or not, would not put that in there, but whatever. Okay. So the unit amount is three dollars for ten. So if I I have to buy them in three dollar increments, which means that this number has to go to three. Okay. Um, okay. So this is going to be ice cubes. So my ice cubes will go up by ten times whatever the amount they selected, because you buy them in groups of ten. Okay. And the money goes down by three, by, because that's how many groups that they purchased. Okay. Um, instead of saying, just to avoid confusion, in, uh, instead of saying $1 for three cups, because the person might say that, oh, I only want to buy two cups, and actually they're buying two packs of cups. Um, what we might want to do is say $1 for a pack of three. Okay, and this one will say for a bag of ten. Okay. And it's always good to have, these are user-friendly features, so it's good to have uh, good clear menus so the user clearly understands what they're doing. And it avoids, it avoids confusion and makes the game more playable. Okay, this looks like it should be working. Let's go and test it all out and see what happens. Okay, so I go to the store, purchase lemons. Um, let's say I want to buy, uh, for every item I'll try and purchase a negative amount and also a too high amount. So negative one. Okay, a lot. I don't know, buy like 20. Good. Okay, check the sugar. Okay, I want to purchase uh, negative 9. Okay, too much. And I'll buy 20 sugar as well. Okay, looking good. I lost $20 from the lemons and $40 from the sugar. So I have a total of $60 gone from my money. That's right. Okay, so I'll purchase cups next. Okay, so three. How many would you like to purchase? Um, I don't know, let's choose uh, 15. Okay, so that should give me 45 cups and I should lose $15. Okay, that's right. Okay, um, I forgot to check the negative numbers, so let's go negative 9, I don't know, 11, oh, I can buy 11. Uh, let's go 26, I can't afford 26. Okay, uh, 0, good, looks good. Uh, last one, ice cubes. Okay, negative 2, okay. 2200 nope okay uh, excuse me cost three dollars each so I'm gonna buy eight okay and that's right so I got 80 ice cubes so I bought three bag or eight bags and it cost me twenty four dollars all right and then I want to exit the store so I press zero that exits from the store loop and goes back to the main menu loop and you can see that the inventory items have persisted okay so the money is still at one dollar the inventory has still been kept and that's basically how you set up a main game uh, store in a main game loop anyways i hope you uh, found this video informative and if you have any questions or want to see something else please leave a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe